What's going on guys? Spencer here with HM Massage, back with another video. Today I'm going to go over a full back massage for you guys. I'm going to show you hands on the warm up. We're going to get into some deep tissue work in between the shoulder blades today. And we're going to close it out. Let's get into it. Hey guys, so back with another video. We're going to be doing a voiceover today because I was filming and when I uploaded the footage, a lot of the audio was broken. It was just a very annoying ringing sound. So we're gonna be doing a voiceover, but I've upgraded since the last time I uploaded because now we have two angles, which is really cool. The second angle gives a really awesome view, not only because sometimes I block the camera with my back when I'm doing the massage, but this way you can see the same massage happening from a couple different angles. You can jump back and forth and really get a good grasp of the techniques that we're applying and how it's going to fix people as we apply them in life. So the two angles is very cool. I think it turned out really nice. So my client here complained of pain in his right shoulder, specifically between the shoulder blades on the right side, a little bit lower down. This is his lower trapezius and rhomboids medial or inside to the scapula. So the big takeaway when working on someone's pain, especially if they have a very singular or specific spot, is that we need to work the whole back. We have to warm up everything in order to then gradually become more specific and work out the knot and the adhesions. We can't just jump right into deep tissue work on a specific knot. Clients' muscles are going to fight back, it's going to be uncomfortable, they're going to move and squeeze their body, and it's just going to be counterproductive. So we have to warm up everything. So that's what I'll be doing here, warming up the whole back, the low back, the triceps, the neck, all in order to then get more specific and start to work away from that shoulder blade and into those deep lower rhomboid muscles where his pain is at. So I'm just starting here with some very slow trap holds. I'm pulling the traps and the levator scapulas, all of these shoulder muscles away from the neck. We're also gonna be working some of the bigger muscles, the erector spinaeus group running down the spine, some of the lats, the triceps, the teres, but also neck muscles, the splenius muscles, suboccipitals, scalenes. There's basically no muscle we're not going to work, so it helps to know what is pulling on what. I tend to use my knuckles a lot when warming up, and that's because they apply a nice broad pressure while still allowing me to go deep but also keep my wrists straight. It's important for me not to hyperflex my wrists, and if I were to do a lot of palm pressure, that would put my wrists in a bad spot, and it would probably be a little bit less pressure. So use the palms to apply lotion, but use the knuckles to go a little deeper or warm up. But I always warm up by pulling the low back away from the spine, but then pushing the upper back towards the spine. That's because the low back is usually contracted and tight already, whereas the upper back is usually going to be stretched thin and overstretched. So it helps to kind of push the muscle fibers the direction I want them to go. The other thing to notice is that, yeah, this is a 40 minute long video, and that's because massage is slow. A good massage, especially a good deep tissue massage, is gonna have slow techniques, very long holds, a lot of warm-up. All of this translates into fast recovery and a good reaction from the client. It's definitely not a race, and that is why even now doing two-hour massages I don't get bored because of how slow you should be going and how long it can really take to fix somebody's issues. We often accumulate issues over months or years, and so you're gonna 
take a while to fix those same issues, you're not going to be able to fix them right away. Uh, here's a great example of why the two angles is good because my back was blocking the shot But I like to also go into kneading the neck This is a very common area to hold tension and a lot of people will love you if you work this area and really release the tension there Now that we've warmed up the back for a while, I will take their arm and drop it on the side. We're about 10 minutes into the massage at this point, which is pretty common for how long I like to warm up. So it really does take a while, but from here I will drop their arm on the side and start working on the triceps and the rear delts. The triceps come up and attach to the shoulder as well as the rear delt. So don't forget about the arm muscles. If somebody is having mid-back pain, there's a good chance that their triceps, their delts, their lats are all pulling the shoulder blade away and that their mid-back is just having to work overtime trying to pull it back in. I rock the front of the shoulder here, cupping it. Give it some nice motion and squeezing. This is all to jostle loose the tendons, the ligaments, and any muscles or fascia that may be hanging on. I'm gonna push those muscles back towards the spine like I was saying. and I'm doing a little thumb iron technique just to keep my thumbs out of the way. I'm not actually putting any pressure on my thumbs. They are just there kind of guiding. From here, I will work the lats. I will push the lats away, which really opens up the space between the rib cage and the hip bone or the iliac crest. And then this will allow me to come in and work the low back which I love working the low back when their arm is on the side. And that's because the space that's made from having their arm on the side really allows me to target the QL or quadratus lumborum muscles. And QL is a culprit for probably 90% of low back pain. So it is hugely important to work along with the erector spinaeus and lats for the low back. But I will always do this. I come in with a nice broad forearm, warm up a bit, and as I sink in, I can start to get a bit more specific and a little bit deeper. This is a great example of one angle getting completely blocked by my back, but hey, we got two angles because I am leveling up. I'm doing it guys, I made this for you. From here I'll sharpen the elbow and start to target that QL muscle. And notice also I am keeping my wrists relaxed. My wrists, while they are moving a little bit, aren't up in the air because when you're not using your wrists, 
you want to give them a break. And my apologies now guys, the second angle of the video cut out for about 12 minutes. So I don't have the second angle from about the 12.30 mark to the 25 minute mark. So if you're somebody who needs two angles, if you need that in your life, feel free to jump up to the 25 minute mark, I get it. Thank you for understanding, sorry about those technical issues. But I'm gonna finish off the low back and then start to go into the bread and butter move at the upper back. And once again, anything I do to this side, I need to do to the other side. Clients have two sides of their bodies, so you have to work both of them. And check it out guys, it is the bread and butter move. Uh, like I said, this is my bread and butter of most back massages because I use my broad part of the forearm and I sink it right in between that crook of the traps and the neck. And then as I slowly warm up with the broad pressure, I will sharpen the elbow into a nice elbow hold and then really start working some of those deep attachments there. This is also when the second angle cuts out for about 12 minutes. So if you wanna jump ahead, feel free. But we're just doing that nice deep elbow work on the traps and levator, as well as many other muscles. I believe we have about 18 muscles attaching to each shoulder. So here specifically, we not only have the traps, which are the big ones on the surface, but the rhomboids, the levator, a little bit of supraspinatus, which is a rotator cuff, some of the splenius muscles, subox, scalenes, it goes on. But we've jumped over to the other side and this is where I do the same techniques just apply them to the other side of the body. So similar work on the post delt right here. This is a great one to help roll shoulders. And then we'll keep working into the triceps, the rotator cuffs, the lats, and eventually into the low back and QL muscles. Now that we are at the low back QL hold, I love to talk about this because once again, it is urgent that we go slow with massages. 
The low back particularly has some very thick, very strong muscles that will beat you if you try and fight them. You'll never win a pressing contest against somebody's muscles if their muscles try and fight back against you. Our muscles are too strong, no matter how tough you are, so really go slow and allow the muscle to let you in. I do like to twist my arm back and forth. It adds a nice dynamic feel, some pressure, some motion, a little bit of rotation to the low back hold. And although you can't tell, we are getting closer and closer and working very deep, closely to the spine, but we never hit the spine. I then will roll my for forearm over and start to work up the low back and one thing I want to notice is that none of his muscles here ever contract spasm or fight back not once and that is so important to notice that everything is within his comfort range it's nice and broad and none of his muscles are upset or angry about the pressure it's very easy to come up at a wrong angle or too deep and have somebody's muscles fight back. And that is not good. <laughs> so do not do it. And we've made it to where I really start to get into the specific focus work of the area that's bothering the client. So we're about 20 minutes into the massage and just now am I starting to approach the specific knots and the specific adhesions that's hurting him. That's how much warm up we should be doing on both sides of the body. Warm up everything before you start to get specific and fix an issue. From here, we can then start to do just that, go specific. So we're working broad at first, knuckles, palms, forearms, and then I start to specify the knuckles. I start to sharpen the forearm a bit. I start to use my front knuckles, my fingers, potentially even my thumb, but once again, don't overuse your thumbs. We want to save our thumbs as therapists. I will use my thumbs occasionally, but quite rarely. Here, I can tell that his traps are really glued onto his shoulder blade. 
most likely the tissue surrounding the shoulder blade, the infraspinatus, and the traps have kind of fused together a little bit through tension. And so I noticed that I have to come back and honestly push the traps off of the scapula first. Each time I come here and do my elbow move on the levator, it's not quite getting the release I want. And so that's how I was able to determine that I think his issue lies more on the shoulder blade itself, not necessarily up by the neck. So after a while here, I will then go over and just start pushing all of the tissue off of the shoulder blade back towards his middle, towards the spine, towards the median. And that ultimately gives the best result for his shoulder muscles, his back muscles, to start relaxing. And if a client's and if a client's shoulder blade and shoulder muscles are especially tight, I will do this to where I put the hand on the small of the back. I first make sure and determine that they have the range of motion. They haven't had any shoulder surgeries or any pins or any other obstruction that might not allow them to put their hand in this position. And then very importantly, I also lightly work the front delt just to make sure that the front of their shoulder isn't pinching in on itself. Once you've confirmed all those and it feels good for the client, then I can start to work the medial attachments of the scapula. And here we're getting in some nice deep work along those rhomboid fibers that attach not only to the shoulder blade but underneath it and all the way over to the side. And a full deep tissue massage, back massage anyway, is a lot of repetition because we are just chipping away at some very tight fibers over and over again. And it takes a long time to hurt yourself, so it takes a long time to fix it too. I'm not gonna talk too much more though for the back portion of this. I will jump in at the end here once we get to the neck and scalp massage. If you are still watching this far along, thank you so much for everything, for all the support. I hope you've enjoyed the video thus far. But making YouTube videos uh, is really fun and I'm so glad that they've had such a positive effect and impact on people throughout the world. I know I've taken breaks here and there, that's just life, but when I complete a video and people see it and it makes them feel better, or they learn something from it. It is so awesome. It's like a feeling 
that really nothing else matches to know that you really help people. And that's uh, ultimately what I'm out here just trying to do. That's the, the source of it all. So thank you so much, guys. I'll see you in a little bit. I hope you enjoy the rest of this back massage. And I know I said I wasn't going to comment on the back anymore, but aha, there's the second angle. It's back. I know we all missed it. I missed it. You missed it. It is back now. So now you can enjoy the rest of the massage techniques. And I will see you guys at the head and neck massage at the end.
No massage is ever complete without a little bit of neck and head work. So here we are. I am just opening up the chest. I'm working pec major, pec minor, a little bit of pec minor anyway. And the anterior deltoid, I'm crossing over some bicep tendons as well. Just doing a knuckle spread on the muscles here. A little bit of palmar friction and rocking. And this is all just to warm up the shoulders and open them up a little bit. Everybody has rounded shoulders these days. A little bit of kyphosis, which is just rounded back. And so it's important that we do thoracic extension. We have to open up our chest and shoulders. I would recommend doing it daily. Coming in, I'm also going to start working not only the pecs in front of the collarbone or clavicle, but the scalenes and the platysma and the traps all behind the clavicle. I like to use my knuckle on the traps because they are thick muscles. It gives a nice deep tissue here. And one thing I do is I will pin down the traps and levator with my knuckles and then just give a little stretch and range of motion too. As you warm up, you can work more specifically with your more distal knuckles, the, the knuckles further away on your hand, and then getting into some of the subocciput region. So kind of hard to tell, but I'm using my fingertips to really work the bottom of his neck, that divot where his neck meets his skull. This is a major source of tension and so vital to work on everybody. I then swap over to the other side, which we can see on the second angle, and do the same techniques. As we come up into our final technique, which is the scalp massage, we slide our hands up, avoiding their jaw. Don't work the inside of their jaw unless you're going to do specific TMJ work because that's a tender area for people. But always be sure to work people's ears. If they have earrings in that have been in for a long time, it won't hurt them to work around them. If they're fresh, maybe just be careful and then come into the scalp. We have the parietal muscles, the frontal muscles. A lot of tension gets held in the scalp, even though it doesn't have all that much muscle up there. This just feels good to everybody. I've been working this area a lot, right at the corner of the eyelids and the nose. There's the frontalis muscles that meet to a muscle called the procerus, and that creates a lot of tension as well. People are always surprised how tender this spot is. Work the eyebrows, the eyelids. Go up to the forehead. Finish off with the scalp, and you will have made their day.
that's going to be it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it this far. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel for more content. I will see you guys on the next video. I hope you have a great rest of your day.